While we've talked about a number of molecules and compounds here that are going to be very important throughout the course, let's start with one of the most important for anatomy and physiology. And let's look at water. So again, here's the water molecule as we saw earlier with the sharing of electrons between the two hydrogens and the oxygen forming the water molecule H2O. We've already talked about the covalent bonds that form within this water molecule. But another portion of the covalent molecules that we need to look at is looking at the water here, what you might notice is that the protons from the hydrogen atoms are sort of sticking out away from the oxygen. So we have this positive side of the molecule. The oxygen side has many more electrons near it and the electrons are negatively charged so we have a negative side to this molecule. In this case what we call it is a polar molecule. It has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. Just like the earth is polar, it has a north pole and a south pole. This is an important concept to understand in terms of relating it to how water molecules react within the body and act within the body. So one important aspect is that there's attraction between the water molecules. These attractions are called intermolecular bonds because they are between the molecules. They're intermolecular. And this gives it the properties that we see that are pretty different than other chemicals that you see without getting into those, where water at the temperature it is at room temperature and so on will actually be liquid, whereas a lot of other molecules are actually gases, like the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air we breathe. Furthermore, these molecules can allow for other molecules to dissolve within them and it's important in the body for transporting other molecules. So let's look at an example that's related to anatomy and physiology. If we have some sodium chloride, some table salt, and I put it in a solution of water as shown here. What's not being shown in this image is that these molecules are moving around bumping into each other and so on. And so if you've ever put salt in water, you know that it will actually dissolve in the water. But here's why. Looking at the sodium chloride, as we mentioned earlier, the sodium has a positive charge and the chloride ions have a negative charge in this compound. The water, as we just mentioned, has positive and negative sides. And so as these water molecules bump into the sodium chloride within the solution, the positive sides are attracted towards the negative chloride ions. The negative side is attracted towards the positive sodium ions. And as they bump into those ions, they will actually pull those ions apart, allowing for the sodium chloride to dissolve in solution. Again, this is important for our body because sodium, potassium, chloride ions that we'll talk about later on in the course are all able to be dissolved in our body because our body is mostly water. And this is how it works because of the chemical structure of the water and of the ions themselves. And so, describe ions in relation to electrolytes. This concept can be tricky just because it's very similar to different words meaning the same things. And so when we have sodium chloride, when we have the compound sodium chloride, we talked about these sodium ions and the chloride ions. Electrolytes are ions, or what we call ions, when they dissolve in water. They have the exact same structure. The sodium ions are one positive, the chloride ions are one negative, but they're actually dissolved in the water. The term electrolytes is used because when people were first discovering these things, they realized that having the sodium and the chloride dissolved in the water allowed for electricity to travel through the water. This will become important later on when we start talking about the movement of ions in our bodies and so on. But don't allow these terms to confuse you because ions are chemicals that have positive and negative charges as we've previously discussed. And electrolytes are merely ions that have dissolved into solution. So related to this idea of ions and electrolytes, things that are dissolved in water, let's move on to pH and talk about acids and bases. And so imagine we had a container, and in that container we had water. As we just mentioned, electrolytes are ions that have ultimately dissolved in water. And so let's imagine in this container here we have water, but now we have put in some chemical that produces hydrogen ions specifically. These hydrogen ions are ultimately forming an acid in this solution. 
An acid is something that, when dissolved in water, produces free hydrogen ions. The water actually pulls the hydrogen ions apart, and these free hydrogen ions are ultimately what forms the acid. If we look at the pH scale here, what we can see is that there are a range of acidities, and then there's neutral, and there's basic solutions, and so on. Take a moment to look here at the uh, continuum of the pH scale, and let's notice a few things. The pH values range from 0 down to 14. 0 is the highest acidity that you can have for a solution, and 14 is the most basic solution that you could have. Right in the middle at neutral, we have 7. That is pure H2O. Okay, it is neither acidic or basic. And so, as we have more free hydrogen ions within a solution, we have an increasingly acidic um, solution. So, related to the pure H2O, the pure water, we can see that urine has a, an acidity of somewhere between 5 and 8 on the pH scale. Coffee is slightly more acidic than that at about a pH of 5. Moving up to lemon juice, stomach contents, vinegar, and so on, we have increasingly acidic solutions. Hydrochloric acid, a type of acid you might find in a science lab, is up at the pH value of zero, extremely strong acid. One thing to note about the pH scale is that each step on the pH scale is 10 times more acidic than the last step. So to look at black coffee at a pH of five, it's actually 10 times more concentrated than urine at a pH of six because it is one step further on the pH scale. If we were to look at stomach acid, let's say at a pH of two, it's actually uh, three steps from black coffee, and so it's 10 times 10 times 10, or a thousand times more acidic than the black coffee. Down below neutral, we can see that as we move increasingly basic, we have intestinal contents at our pH of 8 to 10, soap solutions at 10, household ammonia, so a cleaner, all the way down to 14, where we have sodium hydroxide, basically a, a pure base, again, that you might find in a lab. In these basic solutions, we actually have less and less hydrogen, as is being indicated in the image, and oftentimes they release hydroxide ions, not hydrogen ions. And so as you can see from the sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide is sodium bound to an OH ion. And so when it breaks down in solution, it frees a lot of hydroxide ions to float around in the solution, which causes an increase in the basicity of the solution. To try to make this make a little bit more sense, let's look at pure H2O. It is neutral, but let's look at why. H2O, we have two hydrogens and we have one oxygen. When it breaks down, it can actually form a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. So as we were just talking about, the hydrogen ion tends to cause increasing acidity. The hydroxide ion tends to create basicity. And so a molecule of H2O can break down into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, and it will form one of each. And so ultimately, overall, water is actually neutral, because any of it that breaks down, breaks down into equal parts of acid and base. However, as we just mentioned, if we dissolve things into the water and we release more hydrogen ions, then we have increasing acidity. If we release more hydroxide ions, the balance is thrown off and we increase the basicity of the solution. So we want to talk about the importance of buffers in homeostasis. A buffer is a chemical that we can add to a solution that helps to maintain our pH even if we're adding more hydrogen ions or more hydroxide ions to the solution. As you can see from the pH scale, pure water lies at a pH of 7. Blood lies in a range of 7.35 to 7.45 pH. Our body cannot sway very far to the acidity or the basic side of things before we start to have illness or other repercussions from the change in acidity or basicity. And so our body uses buffers to maintain homeostasis so that the pH of our body does not change all that much. So looking at blood, blood is mostly water, but it also has some hydrogen and hydroxide ions in it. 
And so our blood with our hypothetical OH to H uh, ratio that is shown in the screen here is 7.35 to 7.45 in range. But let's say for some reason, maybe I've eaten some food that is highly acidic. Maybe I've uh, used some of that lemon juice up in the acidic range and I've digested it and I've brought in extra hydrogen ions into my body as shown here. Now my blood might sway outside of the 7.35 to 7.45 range. And so I have buffers in my body and we'll talk more specifically about types that we have, but these are chemicals that are going around in my blood and other parts of my body that will react with the hydrogen ions that I just took into my blood in order for them not to be free hydrogen ions that are swaying my pH. This helps maintain my homeostasis so that my pH does not move out of that normal range that keeps me healthy.